Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I have a super cool fun project for you using stencils to create your own texture rubbing plates with molding paste. So we're going to create these texture rubbing plates and then we're going to use beeswax crayons and a paint resist to come up with some beautiful collage papers that will not tear with white edges. They're going to tear with colored edges because of the special paper that I'm using. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. So this week I'm going to show you how to make your own texture rubbing plates on cardstock with stencils and molding paste so that we can have a 9 by 12 rubbing plate to work with 9 by 12 pad of sketch rice paper, which is my favorite paper for collage. So what I've got is Golden's coarse molding paste. You can use any kind of molding paste you have on hand. This is kind of fun because it has a, a gritty texture. It has sand mixed in with it. So it'll give us an extra layer of texture in the texture. And we love texture. So I've got two sheets of black, smooth, and sturdy 9 by 12 cardstock from Joggles, which is the perfect size to accommodate our 9 by 12 stencils also from Joggles. This one is called Bubble Blast, and this one is called Planet Peacock. So I chose these because they have small patterns, which would make great rubbings for, with the texture. And when we make the rubbings, we're going to do that with some beeswax crayons because the beeswax is going to resist the paint that we apply over the top of the rubbings better than anything else. Okay, that will be the second step. So we're going to take the 9 by 12 cardstock and the 9 by 12 bubble blast stencil. I've got the molding paste, which may or may not be a little dry. And I'm going to spread it through the stencil with the palette knife. It does seem a little dried out, but it's still spreadable, so that's good. So the idea is just to get a thin layer of this all the way through the stencil. I have, don't fear, I have more molding paste. I have something called light molding paste, and that might be interesting to use on the second one in case it's something that you have on hand, and we could see the difference between the coarse molding paste and the light. Light molding paste means it's lightweight. It's kind of whipped and it's got a lighter um, weight to it. So think about if you had a giant painting and you wanted to use a lot of molding paste on it, but you didn't want it to add a lot of weight to the painting. That's when you would use that whipped light molding paste. Um, all molding, molding paste can have paint mixed in with it. And even though the molding paste looks white when I'm spreading it here, it does not dilute the color of your paint. It does not make your paint look as though it was mixed with white paint. So if you put bright red into this molding paste and you spread it through a stencil and you let it dry, it will be bright red. It's not going to turn pink. So you can add paint to the molding paste or you can spread the molding paste and paint on top of it. So you can add texture to the backgrounds of your artwork by spreading molding paste through a stencil and then coming back and sort of painting on top of it if you want to add varied colors and mark making. And when you want to do mark making, that's what this um, coarse molding paste is great for because it's going to have a nice sandy tooth that is really going to allow your pencils, colored pencils, graphite pencils, anything that requires a tooth to draw on um, that won't draw on a smooth, slick surface, like the light molding paste is going to give us a smooth, kind of plasticky surface. This coarse molding paste is what you want to use as your go-to if you want to draw on top of it with something that requires a tooth. Okay, I think we're pretty good here. Somebody didn't put the lid back on tight. Okay. So that's all spread out. And then I'm just going to lift the stencil. And there we 
are going to have a raised texture. Let me show you this on the side. A raised texture of that pattern. So now we just have to be patient and let it dry. And I will off camera do the second one with the light molding paste and then we'll see the difference when we use them. So after your stencil is all covered in molding paste, you want to throw it in the sink and clean that off of it. Don't let it dry on the stencil and make it all thick. Okay, so it has been raining for days and weeks on end here in Sacramento, so it's very humid and things are taking a long time to dry. If you are in a similar climate, I had to let these dry for a couple of days to get them completely dry to the point that I could texture rub on top of them. So be patient um, and, and wait it out. Um, the other products that I'm going to be using today are, these are Faber-Castell's beeswax crayons. I chose the beeswax crayons because that wax seems to repel the paint better than any other wax. You can, of course, try it with children's crayons. You could try it with a candle, um, for candle wax. You could try it with beeswax chunks, um, try it with many other things but i specifically ordered these crayons um for this project because they're faber castell they've got some great vibrant colors and they're beeswax which to me works the best i've also got an atomizer spray bottle this mists the water in a fine 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 mist and that's important for getting the paper even uh, moistened evenly. I am going to be working on my 9 by 12 pad of Japanese sketch rice paper. I love this for collage because it glues down completely and flat because it is highly absorbent. And today you're going to see another benefit of this paper's absorbency. Okay, so and then I am on my nonstick craft mat and I could let my paper dry right on this, but then I would have no desk space to do the next paper on. So I am using a 12 by 16 sheet of uh, palette paper. That's the shiny palette paper. And for each page that I create, um, once I create it on the palette paper, I will just pick it up and set it on the floor and let it dry off to the side. Because once the rice paper is soaked with water, you don't really want to be moving it around a lot. It'll tear very easily because it's so wet. So, okay, so for the first one, the Bubble Blast um, texture pattern, I love circles and um, probably everybody loves circles, I think. So uh, stencils and masks with circular patterns, spirals, circles, concentric circles are highly popular and more popular. They, they appeal to more people than um, rectangles, triangles, and squares. That's an interesting tidbit. So we're going to put the paper with the smooth side facing up towards you. I don't think there's either right or wrong way to do this. You could try it both ways, but I'm going to put the smooth side facing up towards me so the crayon glides across it nicely and I have a nice smooth surface to work with. The back side of the rice paper is unsized and it's a little bit more rough. And you could try both sides. I don't think there's... Um, necessarily a, a reason why it wouldn't work on the other side. So the color combinations that you use for the beeswax crayons, you're going to want to go with a darker paint color than what you color with so that you get the vibrant beeswax resisting through the dark color um, of crayon marking. So for that reason, I'm going to leave out the black probably and the dark purple and maybe this red, but you could always experiment with using the dark colors and light paint, but I just tend to like the light colored crayon with the pop of the dark color paint behind it. So the other idea is that you can do blue rubbing pattern and blue paint to make blue collage paper. You could do green with green to make green collage paper. If you want it to be all in one color, then consider that. If you're making papers for skies or if you're making paper for grass, you might want to stay in one color. But if you want to make eclectic paper that has um, high contrast and multiple colors, then you can jump across the color wheel and use um, warm colors with cool colors or odd color combinations. This is open-ended and it depends on what you want to use the paper for. So I like adding unexpected arbitrary color into my colors. So for in other words, if I'm making blue collage paper, I love having a little bit of orange in it or a little bit of yellow in it or green in it because that energizes the color to me. 
So, um, but for the first one, let's make, uh, let's use yellow and light green, and then I'll paint it with a darker green, and we'll make a, a green themed paper, okay? So the key, you can take the papers off of these. Um, I don't know how difficult that would be. Oh, it's not too hard. Because then you can rub the, the whole side of the stick, okay? And they're triangular, which is nice, so they won't roll off the desk. Um, so the key with this is you really have to get a good solid rubbing. Don't just do it lightly because you won't have enough of an effect. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with this yellow first, I think. I think. Maybe not. I was going to say I could go over the whole thing with yellow and then add the green in. But I'll leave myself a little room for green. And I'm really scrubbing hard. I apologize if the camera is shaking because unfortunately it's attached to the same table. And this table has wiggly legs because it's very old. Okay. So you really have to, I can't say enough, you got to really scrub that crayon really hard because you need a good layer of wax to resist the paint. So let's add a little green to this. And, you know, overlap. I'm going to bring some of the green into the yellow. And I'm going to have some of it by itself. And, by the way, this is the coarse molding paste. So we'll see if that makes any difference in the rubbings. I have a feeling that it's not going to make a difference because it's about the raised texture. But we'll see. So if I get really scrubby, I can fill in these bubbles solidly so you know you can come in here and really press on them and get solid bubbles and then if you just go over the top you get outline bubbles so we can come in here and really press on some of the circles and make fill them in solidly you just have to experiment with this i love the way the circles come up though okay so that's pretty good and solid and now we could go over this with a teal green paint. We could go over it with a Jenkins green, which is really dark. For high contrast, we could go over it with a medium green for kind of lower contrast. But I want to have a high contrast. So I'm going to grab the Jenkins green to create this lovely green collage paper, green yellow collage paper. So, so Jenkins green. So the next step, don't forget to remove your texture plate and you're on the um, palette paper and you're going to take this atomizer and this is going to spray an ultra fine mist, which is really nice. It's going to spray this ultra fine mist and really wet that paper. This way the paint flows better. Okay. So nice and wet. Now I've got a big soft brush and I'm just going to take the Jenkins green and I'm going to, I'm just going to drizzle it right on the paper here. And we could add a different green as well. We could add two tones of green. Whoops. I've got a little blue in my brush, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take my soft wet brush and go over this paper and spread the Jenkins green with a lot of water on the brush. And we've already got lots of water in the paper from the atomized sprayer. So you can see the paint just flows over really quickly uh, because we're not soaking into a dry sheet. Okay, look at how beautiful that is. Look at how beautiful the pattern stands up. So we've got the light yellow and the light green really standing up out of this paper. So let me show you. How beautiful is that? So it's a whole different effect than using the bubble blast stencil directly on the gel plate. Now, the awesome news about this tip is that now, I'm gonna carefully lift this up and show you that the color soaks all the way through. This only happens with rice paper. This will not happen with copy paper or book pages or any other paper. The rice paper is so highly absorbent that the color soaks all the way through. And so do you know what that means? When we tear this paper, we're not ever going to have white edges. We're going to have green edges because the color soaked all the way through. So you're not going to have to worry about tearing it with white edges. You're going to have beautiful green edges. How awesome is that? So that's my Jenkins green. It's pretty dark. I could add a little bit more of it and see if I could get it even darker, or I could even add in another color. Don't worry about getting it super wet on this 
palette sheet because we're just going to set it aside to dry. And because the palette sheet has a slick surface, when it's dry, you're just going to separate it and you're going to peel it right off and it's going to come right off, but you need to wait for it to be completely dry. So I darkened it up in a few areas by adding a little bit more paint. Um, but I really like this for a pure green collage sheet. Now, I have some really dark blue, and this is a high flow um, fluid acrylic, and that means, or a high flow golden acrylic. So that means this comes out really watery, really, really, really watery. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in here and kind of, now this is, of course, taking it a little bit towards blue, but it's also given me some sort of lights and darks on here. And this is what I mean when I say you can sort of play with it. So now it's green, but it's got a little bit of blue and it's got a little bit of sort of light and dark texture going on. So, and those green colors, the green and yellow are really standing out nicely against this. So I'm gonna set that aside to dry and we'll try the peacock texture plate next. Oh, and before I move on to the peacock texture plate, I want to show you this one. This one I created with the dark blue and I used the peach crayon. So that was sort of a pale orange with the dark blue. And I really like how that came out. And it's starting to dry. And you can see, again, look at that rich blue. It's That's the anthraquinone blue, uh, the indigo anthraquinone. And I use that in the high flow. Um, you don't have to have high flow. The fluid acrylics work great with a little bit more water. The high flow acrylics work great with a little bit less water. Um, you could try both. You could also try acrylic inks. Those would probably work as well. So you can see again, this is bleeding all the way through and here's a different color combination of the circles from the bubble blast. So the process of using a raised texture to rub a pattern is actually called frottage. And it has been a technique that's been around for a long time. So I'm loving the way that these stencil texture plates are working with the crayon and the rice paper. It's fantastic. So next we're going to do the peacock, planet peacock texture plate. And this time let's go with maybe a warm color combination. I don't know though, the peacock feathers kind of lend themselves to, to a, a greenish blue color combination. So let's do it maybe with a teal turquoise. Um, let's try that. And um, on this one, I'm gonna use a little bit of the white crayon and a little bit of the light blue. Um, it will be hard for you to see the white crayon. It'll be hard for me to see the white crayon when I'm applying it, but we should see it uh, nicely mixed in with the light blue. And if I do use teal, I'm gonna have to use a darker teal than this in order for it to show up. So rather than using everybody's favorite teal, I think I'll use phthalo teal, which is a darker, richer teal color. Okay, which is still in the family of dark blue. So we'll do this one twice so that we can see what a warm color looks like. But I just feel like peacock needs to be peacock colors. So again, really scrubbing on the full side of the crayon, working on the smooth surface of the paper and going all the way out to the edges, that's the benefit of using the nine by 12 stencil with the nine by 12 cardstock and the nine by 12 sheet of paper is that we're gonna get a full sheet this way without any waste. And the nice thing about putting these on cardstock is they're lightweight, they're easy to store, they don't take up a lot of room. You could make a, a several of them and stack them together, put them in an envelope and store them in your studio easy. Okay, so now let's add a little bit. Now you can see the pattern of the light blue. And I'm pressing really hard. And I'm gonna come back and add even more white. Okay. So this will be sort of a two-toned and we'll take the 
palette sheet out so we can do one more. Okay, so remember the next step is to take the atomizing spray and get this sheet evenly damp. And I don't think you can add enough water. It just helps the paint to flow on the top. So let's look at that dark thalo turquoise. Okay, so turquoise thalo. And this is the fluid acrylic. And again, just like I did with the Jenkins green, I'm just gonna drizzle it on there. I'm gonna get my, my soft bristle, big wet brush and spread it around. Ooh, look at that. Wow, wow, I really like that. So all this water helps the paint to move around on the rice paper because the rice paper is so absorbent, you, you really need to wet it first. Otherwise you brush across it and it just soaks up all your paint. Okay, so we need to do a little bit more down here at the bottom. And of course, the darker we do this, uh, the more high contrast we get. So, and the lighter, the less contrast. And one is not better than the other. It depends on what you want to use it for. So if I want to darken it down, I'm going to add some more paint. And I'm going to get a higher contrast. Then I could also come in with another color. So I could add some of the, uh, that's the same color, the turquoise thalo. Let's add some of the, the indigo anthraquinone again. And just kind of move that around a little bit in here so we can get two-tone. Ah, look at how beautiful that is. Wow, wow. So now we've got this beautiful peacock, planet peacock pattern. And you can see how the light crayon against the dark paint color really is quite the contrast. So that's really lovely. Um, it's really nice and rich dark on the back. And I'm really liking that a lot. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and we're going to do one more in a warm color combo. And let's see, we'll do the peacock again. So let's try the, let's see, if we go with yellow and peach maybe. And then we could go over it with an orangey red. That would be a nice combo. Okay, so that yellow is looking really good. And then adding some of the peach. You can also do this with just one color. Um, when I, you know, move my hand around, it may shift out of registration, but that doesn't even matter to me because I'm tearing this up in little pieces for collage. So I'm not super worried about the pattern being perfectly presented. But if you are, then you just want to make sure you hang on tight and don't, don't get it out of alignment. Okay, so that's a pretty nice combo of the yellow and peach. Oh, don't forget to take your plate out before you spray the water. So we'll do an orangey red, like a pyrrole red light on this. When you switch from green to red, you wanna make sure you really clean out your brush. You can see that has a little, a little blue in it. But you really want to clean out your brush because if we add blue to the red, it's just, or green to the red, it's going to dull it, dull it down. So, ooh, this is looking nice. Look at that. And this is a, the pyrrole red light. You could also do it with a deep dark red. Um, if you wanted it richer, uh, higher contrast, go darker with the paint color. Look at that. That is so beautiful. And I think that I would like to go a little darker. So I'm going to try, how about adding some magenta? That is a little bit darker and, ooh, and still a warm color. So we're getting a nice effect adding the magenta with the orange and those two crayon colors. So let's get this all the way out to the edges. Make sure it's soaked all the way through. Definitely has. And look at that combo of colors and textures. I'm loving that.
Really nice. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And lastly, I want to try one. Oh, and I don't have any more palette paper. So I'm just going to do it on the desk. This one, I want to make a multicolor, um, like cross the color wheel combo. So like warm with cool um, and arbitrary color combination that is just random so that it wouldn't necessarily be green paper or blue paper specifically without any other color. So let's see. Let's use the orange and we'll try adding orange or the light green. I could add the use the light green and add orange. That would be kind of cool. So the light green and the yellow and then paint the paper with orange. Or another color combo that I like to I always like to have this nice light blue on red for like bell peppers and stuff. I love having the blue on the red. Oh, so many decisions. What about purple? Dark purple with the orange and the yellow. I bet that would be really nice and maybe the peach. So yeah, let's try that because I've got a really dark dioxidine purple that would probably look fantastic with these warm colors. So this is a... This is an example of going across the color wheel from warm to cool and adding some arbitrary color. So rather than having a sheet that's monochromatic, all one color or in one color family, we're gonna, we're gonna go a little crazy here. So that's the yellow. And remember on this one, we can scrub a little harder and fill in some of these circles solid, which is kind of fun. And the peach. And don't be afraid to overlap. So I'm gonna bring some of the peach into the yellow. And then the orange, which is kind of also like an orange red. And my paper is a little shifted off of my alignment, um, but I don't want to move it now, so. Okay, I think that's going to be kind of super cool. And we're going to go with the dark purple and maybe a purpley blue. So here's the dioxidine, dioxazine purple. It is a very dark, so we're going to, again, moisten it. There we go. And then the purple and the brush. Oh my goodness, that was a good call. Look at those warm colors popping out of this deep dark purple. Beautiful. Look at that. That is really cool. I like that and I could add, I'm adding a little ultramarine. I don't know if that'll show up because it's not as dark as the, as the purple, but we'll put a little bit of that in there and go all the way out to the edges. So I also want to bring back this one because I want to show you that as it's drying, it's resisting even more with the crayon. So you can see the peacock pattern coming through even more as it's drying. And then look at this beautiful combo of warm and cool colors. Just really beautiful, really beautiful. And here's the benefit of that that desktop and I'll just set it aside to dry because I have one more idea for you. So let's just set that there. I really want to marble two colors together and rather than putting the second one on top of the first one, let's leave space for it. Okay, now let's try, we'll use this one again.
And I really like how that came out. That's another fun one. So to show you that a little closer, we've got a lot of different colors rather than laying them on top of each other, kind of letting them meander in the white. And then you can see the distinction between the magenta and the blue. So I hope you found that um, in this inspiring and I hope you will try making some um, texture plates with a bunch of stencils so that you can use your stencils in a whole different way. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing to the YouTube channel. And if you haven't ever subscribed in the upper corner to the newsletter, um, it might be something that you would like to do and have some information about workshops, online classes, etc. And this YouTube tutorial tidbit will publish every Friday to your email inbox. So I'll see you back here next week. And thank you for being here. Happy Friday. Bye.